Hi, I'm David Goforth, Cooperative Extension Agent. This is our series on local foods. Today I'm out here at the farmer's market trying to get some ingredients for soup. Uh, let's take a look at a few of the things we've got down through here. Uh, we've got some greens out here today and very much a ingredient that I'll sometimes put in towards the end of soup. You don't cook them a lot. We've also got the onions and potatoes that we can put in soup and carrots would be very good in soup. Uh, we also want to get a little bit of meat here, so let's uh, step down here and take a look at some ground beef. Good morning. Hey Audrey, this is Audrey Swain here with uh, T&D Charlet. Uh, and Charlet, I think that's a French word because you don't pronounce half the syllables, in it, half the uh, letters in it. Yes sir, it is French. It's a breed of uh, cows? That yes sir, it, a breed, it is a breed that we use for our leanness and the leanness is coming from the being grass fed start and finished on grass and then our meat's testing 97% lean and it's all raised on a farm. Okay, so that would be some other choices. You hear about Angus, you hear about Hereford and things like that. All those are actually selected for a little bit more fat than what you got with the Charlotte. Yes sir. So we're looking for a healthier cut here. Well, healthy is our name here. We're looking for uh, some ground beef, I believe, for a uh, soup. Good choice, good choice. <laughs> and as you see, it's in a pound pack and it's very, very lean. When you use that pound of ground beef, you're gonna get a pound of ground beef. Yeah, I've had people tell me that. The butchers say, I don't care what price it is, you just choose how much grease you're gonna cook out. <laughs> exactly, it's very healthy for you. <laughs> that'll be good, so we'll brown that and put it into our soup then. Oh, that'll be great. Well, let's get this back in the pan, see what kind of soup she can cook up with it. I think she'll like ground beef a little bit better than if she had deer. Well, Pam. I've got us some ground beef for some soup. This is Charlet, which is the name of the breed, not the name of the cow. Uh, I'd say it's a very lean cut of uh, ground beef. Well, great. Well, let's make some soup with that ground beef. We can do it. You know, David, before we even get started, let's just think a little bit about the technique of preparing soup. Um, I know to you, you're a chef, you like to do a lot of cooking, and soup is probably second nature to you. But just for everybody else's benefit, soup is one of the oldest cookery techniques that we have. And you know, cavemen first probably did soup by just pull, uh, pulling some dead meat off of animals and putting it in a pot with some water and heating it. But we've come a little ways from there. So soup making is one of the oldest cooking techniques that we have. And it's perfect to use the ground beef right. with soup today. Well, we want to brown, uh, brown it first, don't we? We certainly do want to brown the ground beef first. So while you start on that, let me just uh, tell folks that our recipe that we're going to be using today is a spicy potato soup. And the ingredients will be one pound of ground beef, four cups of peeled potatoes, one small chopped onion, three eight ounce cans of tomato sauce, four cups of water, two teaspoons of salt, one and a half teaspoons of pepper, and then one teaspoon hot pepper. This is gonna be a spicy potato soup using the lean ground beef or the ground beef from the farmer's market. I do like uh, spice in my life, but uh, <laughs> let me just mention real quickly here, this potato is not a locally grown potato. Uh, the potatoes we normally uh, start harvesting them around June, May for some of the earliest potatoes we dig out. And June, they taste really good then. We'll sell them during the summer. And when I was doing a home garden for myself, I'd sometimes have potatoes now. But they would start sprouting. The eyes would start getting ready to sprout and uh, they would shrivel up sometimes. And so we're uh, just not quite as appealing as they are to buy them at the grocery store. So we're really not competitive on potatoes late in the year. We can do it in a home garden situation. We uh, didn't have any at the farmer's market uh, Saturday. Now so the, just in review, we would find potatoes at the farmer's market when? Starting in May would be some of the earliest ones and then they would come on in June, you'd have plenty of them June, July, August and then they sell out, to be honest with you, what they're growing. They can, they'll can they probably start growing some more over time. Okay, well great. Well, uh, you know, whether it's a potato from the farmer's market or the grocery store, we need to treat it the same way. All vegetables need to be washed, and this is so important. I think a lot of times we skip the process or skip washing vegetables, but we certainly want to wash the vegetable, and then let's use a vegetable brush and actually scrub the vegetable with the skin on to get the bacteria and any germs off of the potato. 
So we treat a potato the same, but we'll look forward to potatoes from the farmer's market in just a couple of months. Now she said to brown this thing, we wouldn't need to add any grease to it. Absolutely not. But if, she said, if we were going to cook it long enough to make some uh, spaghetti sauce or something out of it, she said we might have to add a little bit of grease to it. There's not a bit of grease in the pan here. Okay, well that's great because um, if you're using uh, beef from the grocery store, you probably will need to drain it. As you say, there is no uh, oil or fat to be drained. Um, and then David, I, I, you wanted to talk about onions, didn't you? Well, onions are something, they had a few uh, spring onion types at the farmer's market, which we could have used in a soup, but I didn't get one of them. Uh, we. Uh, onions could be grown here year round and would uh, taste great here year round. Uh, again, typically the onion growers will sell out during the summertime and so they can grow some very good tasting onions here. Sounds like we have a lot to look forward to with potatoes coming and onions coming. So Now this is not local either. <laughs> uh, hold on, you're getting ahead David. Okay, now though, I think we want to say something about these potatoes before, I think you're hungry. You want to get this soup made, don't you? No, I'm not in that big of a rush. <laughs> okay. Well, just with the potatoes then, we've talked about washing them and brushing them uh, with a vegetable brush, and then we're ready to peel the potato. And some people will use a vegetable peeler to peel the potato, but I kind of like to peel the potato just using a little paring knife. It seems to be so much quicker and easier. And then we'll want to cube the potato into about one half inch cubes. Now, some of mine look bigger and some look smaller, so we're not gonna get a little measuring tape out and measure them, but you want your potatoes to be about a half an inch uh, cubed. Then our onions, we need to just mention in our onions that um, we want, the way I treat an onion is I do cut off the top and then I remove the, the skin, not the dead skin, but I remove the skin and come down a little bit further and believe it or not, we are supposed to, once you get the skin off, there we go, it's coming. Once we get the skin off, it's recommended, believe it or not, that we wash this onion before we cut it. So it, we're really promoting safety and food safety and you know, washing onions and all of our vegetables. Now I think we're ready to make that soup. What do you think? Sounds good. Well, I happen to have a one pound of lean ground beef already brown because I thought we might be a little short on time today. So I have added the one pound ground beef. Then the next ingredient I'm gonna add will be the four cups of cubed potatoes. Get all those potatoes in there. I think my husband loves this recipe. It is, it's really, really spicy. So we've got the potatoes in, and now we're ready to add uh, one small chopped onion. And you know, I think my onion uh, must have been a big onion because we've got uh, almost two little bowls, but that's fine. This is gonna be spicy, I promise you. So we'll add our chopped onions, and then the next thing we're gonna add will be our four cups of water. And it goes without saying that all soup has liquid in it. This is an inexpensive soup and a really, really easy soup because we're using water. But we could be using a vegetable stock or we could be using a meat stock. But now, tell me exactly how to get to this meat stock we talk. I, I hear it. How, how did you make a meat stock? Well, um, if you were cooking, uh, say, that ground beef, not the ground beef, or cooking the turkey, or cooking a roast, that would, and the liquid would be the basis of your meat stock. Okay. And, you know, a long time ago, people used to just throw their vegetables in a pot, and that became their uh, vegetable broth or stock. You can buy commercially prepared uh, beef stock and chicken stock. You can even get it in low sodium uh, forms, which is really something we need to be thinking about. Okay, so we've got the water in, we have the potatoes in, now we're ready to add the uh, eight ounce of tomato sauce. And you're right, David, now this did not come from Cabarrus County. But and I there's bet. a reason for that. Uh, first of all, there's a, such a larger yields where they have. Here, we're lucky to get uh, four or five tons per acre on tomatoes and in California where this stuff was probably made, they can get 30 or 40 tons some years easily enough. So they've got to advantage, they cook it down. It takes a large processing plant to pay for the, uh, the critical hazardous uh, things to, to do that. It's just not something that we could 
cook this in our basement and sell it at the farmer's market, you would never be able to now, do that. Now, a home a canner or food preserver might be able to produce it, and would if they chose to produce this well, at home. I, but I do tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I'll can tomatoes. But again, you're talking a lot of time and effort to cook these down. So sometimes we'll take particularly tomato paste. Uh, I'll buy that from the store. Well, great. So we agree on that then, that we need to buy this from the, uh, the grocery store. Okay, <laughs> then we're going to add the salt and the pepper. And I believe that is one and a half teaspoon salt and uh, one teaspoon pepper. And now get ready. This is the one teaspoon hot sauce. And I am using a commercial hot sauce. Um, and there are a lot of different brands you could use, but this is what adds the spice and the kick to this soup. Of course, now, I can make hot sauce and make that taste like salt water, but anyway. Hey, I guarantee <laughs> this is going to be very spicy, I promise you. So now we're ready to just combine the ingredients in um, what's called a Dutch oven or a, a, a larger pot. And we're just going to bring this to a boil, and it'll take about 10 minutes to get this up to a boil, David. We won't have time to really do all this today, but we'll bring it up to a boil, and it'll take about 10 minutes to come to a boil. And uh, then after we have boiled it, we're going to reduce the heat and simmer it for about one hour. As this is simmering, it's really kind of neat. You can watch it starting to get much thicker and you're looking for uh, it to be getting thicker and the potatoes to, of course, be getting tender. Let me ask you a question now. On, <clears throat> when we start with any kind of animal, we, we've got enough fat in there. And when we start with any kind of a stock, we've got enough fat. But sometimes in the summer, I like to put uh, corn, uh, beans, like lima beans late in the year, sometimes okra and tomato together in just a liquid. And Honestly, that'll taste a little bit better if I put about a half a tablespoon of olive oil or something in it. Well, that's certainly fine to add the olive oil, um, and you want to use a you know a bare minimum of olive oil. We don't really need it with this, and you, you, you've got the meat. The, that's the, right. The fat from the meat. There's enough fat right there. That's the point. That, well, two points really. That number one, there's good fats and there's bad fats. The worst thing we could do is drop a little bit of vegetable shortening in there. That is a fat that I think nobody needs to have in their diet. But you also told me that, uh, for example. Uh, the olive oil is better than the butter. You've got a plant-based versus an animal-based and something about Polly and Monica or something like that too uh, as far as the good fats and bad fats. It could be canola, it could be olive oil. I just like the taste of olive oil a little bit better than canola. Mm -hmm. So we're going to let this simmer for about an hour and it's going to be getting kind of thick. As it's simmering, David, let me just mention that, you know, soups can be used as an appetizer, they can be used as a main dish. We can even have a dessert soup. Boy, those are luscious if you've ever had one. Um, and soups can be served on a cold and winter night, or it can be a really great, refreshing uh, soup at a barbecue in the summertime. I've had a, uh, what soup I remember was a carrot soup, and I'm not sure exactly how they got to that point, but it was a very, just strictly carrots, that was all it was to it, and uh, a very good tasting soup. Well, I'm, I can tell you enjoyed it and you like carrots too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things we can use to make soup out of if you keep a well-stocked pantry. Uh, the beef from the farmer's market, the uh, perhaps chicken in your freezer, uh, these things can be used to make soup on short notice. And if you keep um, some carrots and parsley in your refrigerator and even apples and some other items like that, and then some potatoes and onions in your pantry with dried beans, you can make soup very easily and very quick. This is probably the easiest and quickest soup recipe I know. The other thing that sometimes happens is we get a few leftovers in the refrigerator. Next night we'll have soup. That's right, the next night you can have soup. And this, this recipe only serves six to eight. So if I was at home, this would probably be eaten tonight. And I don't know how it would be at your house. But um, if you have some left over, that is great to store the soup in the refrigerator for one to two days. You can also freeze soup. But again, you, you were talking about keeping the air out when you freeze soup. If you want to freeze soup, you certainly want to uh, select a container that we can keep the air out of, and you might even want to freeze it in individual portion sizes. That way you don't have to reheat all of the soup. And certainly your soup you would want that's been frozen, you would want to use in a couple of months. And the only thing that doesn't really freeze really well in soup is um, 
soups made with fish. And sometimes pasta gets kind of mushy. But this food soup will freeze wonderfully if there happens to be any left at your house. What about okra? Does that freeze? Okra, I would think, would freeze, but it's it's kind of a, how do I describe it, um, not a, as sturdy of a vegetable, and it has a little bit more water in it, so I don't think okra would freeze quite as well as potatoes. I've never found any other way to keep okra, that's why I was wondering. Oh, really? Put it in soup, maybe <laughs> Put it'll keep. Put it in soup, or there's some other things I <laughs> guess you can do. about eating okra when it's in season. <laughs> you want to eat okra in season. Well, David, we don't. We will uh, just wait for this to uh, come to a simmer and come, rather, come to a boil, and then we'll simmer it for an hour. But I do have some soup ready for you to sample in a few minutes. All right. Now, let me ask you a question: Is uh, on some of the like the Brunswick stews and things? They will simmer them for a long time, trying to meld the flavors together. Is there? Any problem with overcooking this soup here if you cooked it a little bit longer? Well, your potatoes would get softer. That would be really all that happens. And you know, this is a quick and easy soup recipe. There are some soups that it may take, uh, uh, the recipe may take for a, uh, take a day, excuse me, for them to be prepared. Uh, but selected this recipe because it was quick and easy. I believe that our families will eat and prepare at home if it's quick and easy, quick and easy. Now, let's have, we've got some potato soup, and it is spicy potato soup. And David, when you fix soup, you always, always want to garnish it, perhaps uh, with some parsley, or perhaps uh, some shredded cheese sprinkled on. Other things you can use to garnish soups include things like, believe it or not, popcorn, uh, crumbled bacon, uh, prepared croutons, other cheeses, a dollop of a sour cream, or even yogurt could go on top of your soup. But you always want to uh, garnish your soup. It just adds the finishing touch. Look, that certainly looks good. Well, and it's spicy, and my husband loves it, so if my husband likes it, that's usually a good sign that others will like it too. Okay. It certainly has been fun today, David, to look at the technique of making soup using locally produced beef from the farmer's market. And a little bit later on this year, we look forward to getting some potatoes and onions from the farmer's market. I hope you'll enjoy this soup, and I hope that you will enjoy eating smart and eating local with us.